Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? It's Friday. Yeah. End of the week. It's a weekend. For some of you in the European time zone, it might already be the weekend for you. Where did I put my Allen keys? Keys of Allen. Where did you go? That's actually a very good question. I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's where we put them. Ah, so how's everyone doing today? Let's get the music going too. Uh, that's right, we're doing resin today. Resin Friday. We got ourselves a Elegoo Mars 4 Max. Um, I have never actually used an Elegoo res any resin or any printer from Elegoo before. Um, this is the, the first time they reached out to me. And I'm like, you know what? I, I don't do a ton of resin. I'll be the first to admit that. Um, but I do dabble in it. And I am a believer that if you are serious about 3D printers, once you start getting a couple FDM machines, you should augment it with at least one resin. Um, because resin, you could just do stuff that you can't really do on an FDM machine. Um, so if you're printing that much, you should at least get one. Don't need to go get a whole fleet. Um, but you, you should at least have one because they're just things resin is just great at. Um, Am I going to suit up? We're in the garage for a reason. Because uh, that way I can just open the door when we're done. <laughs> uh, Mr. Minden gifted five community memberships. Cheers. And Morgan Pierce gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Um, so yeah, so Elegu reached out and they're like, hey, we have our machine, the Mars 4 Max. Do you want to take a look at it? I'm like, you know what? Send it over. Um, but they also sent over their Mercury X bundle wash and cure station. I've been using a very, very not big, very not great condition wash and cure station combo for a while. So this is gonna be nice to have. And then they also sent over some of their 8K resin um, to try out. So we're gonna use that. Um, so I am gonna be setting up a, um, a resin corner out here in the garage. Uh, it's going to be over there. So I will have a resin machine out here. So this will probably be the resin machine for the garage for the next little bit at least. Um, so on today's stream, it's gonna be a nice, easy stream. We're gonna get this out of the box. We're gonna take a look at everything, set it up and get a print going. Um, Saturn, uh, here's the thing. I've heard good things about Elegoo machines, um, especially the resin printers. I know Uncle Jesse uses them all the time and he does good stuff. Um, so I'm actually kind of excited to take a look at it. I know resin machines are pretty similar, um, but it, it's nice to take a look at what else is out there. Um, so yeah, so I think, um, well, everyone's still getting in here. We'll start with the wash and cure station just to take a look at it. I need to buy some ISO. I think I have a jugs downstairs still. Um, so I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Got an Anycubic. Those are pretty much the only resin I've played with so far, the Anycubic machines. Um, I haven't had a chance to really look at the Elegoo, so now we have an Elegoo. Is my overlay bugging out, or is that just from the people gifting memberships? We'll give it a chance here. Um, and then also, uh, every stream, we do give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. So if you want a chance to win that spool of filament, link in the video description. Um, also, I did move the camera. So this is kind of nice. I'm still getting used to this new setup. Um, so because I have everything on uh, on monitor arms, I can move the camera around to get like different camera angles and whatnot. So I figure for these like, um, F, F, F. Also, uh, guess who forgot? And I was like, I'm gonna get myself a stream deck for out here. I got a stream deck downstairs. I love the stream deck. Um, and I'm like, wow, they're on sale on Prime Day. I'm gonna buy one of those. I say this while I'm out and about and I'm looking on my phone. And uh, guess who forgot to buy a stream deck? So we're, we're, we're still using the, uh, the, the, the DIY one where I hit the mute button on accident all the time. But hey, that's content. The wash bucket takes five liters. Oh, I think I have a liter. We'll see. We shall see. Having a fume hood. Okay, so this is one of the things. So 
Um, while I was setting everything up out here for the, the shop layout and whatnot, uh, one of the things was the dirty corner. So see this corner over here? That's what I call the dirty corner, that, that short little bench there because it's only like 19 inches deep because the door opens. Um, so the plan is, is to, if I can, put a fume extractor above it or at least a filtration system. So what that means is just have like ducting that feeds it into like a carbon fire or a carbon uh, activated carbon filter or something, just so I do have some sort of uh, uh, fume chemical control type setup. Um, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. So that is something I'm gonna be kind of maybe doing in the future. Um, also, I wish I had an overhead camera. I do not have an overhead camera. So, ah, oh, they don't have the easy way. Yeah. Okay, company type people. There we go. Go. There we go. All the boxes. I have so many cardboard boxes out here. Great shirt. Thank you. Uh, what do you do? Don't run the washer dry. Learn that the hard way. Like, like. What do you mean, run the washer dry? Like, are you, are you. Like, forget to put uh, ISO in it and turn it on type? Run it dry? Oh, and also uh, links for all this and more in the video description. Um, the links for the printer, uh, the resin machine and all that, those are not affiliate links. Um, I try not to put affiliate links for things I haven't really tested yet. Um, those are just shopping links. So if, if you wanna go buy one, um, I don't know if they're on sale right now. I think they're just kind of a regular price. But there is links in the video description for the Washer Cure Station, then the resin printer, and the resin itself, if you're interested. This thing is huge. Uh, that's what's been like holding me back with resin. I, I've got other machines this size. Uh, the current machine I have is a photon something. Um, but the problem I have is my washing cure station is like one of those small ones. And I, I printed things like I, I did the, um, I printed uh, Chelsea's Lilith model at full size and I had to like put half of it in, wash it, and then put the other half in and wash it just because it, it doesn't fit. <laughs> That's that. There's a lot of parts to this. <laughs> I, I, I didn't expect this to be an assembly, um, but it is. There I go, some screws. Yeah, I need to get more front facing lighting. Yeah, I definitely need more lighting from the front. One second here. Um, hopefully this, oh, you can go there, you can go there, go there. Don't, oh, don't take out the camera. That would be bad. You go there. More brightness. Yeah, that works. I'm just gonna blind myself looking at chat. Because you guys are so, so bright. Oh good, it is two separate things, that's good. New setup looks roomier than the basement. Yes and no. Um, technically, um, this is only about a foot bigger than the basement. Um, the basement is about 10 by 11, I think. This is, in terms of visit, like floor space, it's, it's like 12 by like 12 or something. It's just, I'm able to like put the rack like out of the workspace. I, it, it's, it's just, I'm able to organize this one bigger because I have more dead space behind stuff to like, push stuff into. So I've got more, 
I've got the same amount of workspace, but there's more floor space here. If that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Yeah, this is a big washing cure station. Oh, geez. That goes there. What are you for? What do you do? I don't know what this does. I'm just gonna put you there for now. More garbage. So this is in the cleaning mode. Please add an appropriate amount of cleaning solution. After working for a long time, please clean the residue. So this is the, the wash station, I'm assuming. So this pretty much just sits there. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. So there's the wash station, there's the lid. So this will take up to seven liters. Who carries bulk ISO in Canada? I know I could get it at Costco, but Costco sells it by like 500 milliliter bottles and they're like 20 bucks for a pack of four. What's your opinion on resin 3D printing odor and fumes? Um, I'm gonna say kind of to each their own. It depends on your, your setup and your sensitivity. Um, I worked in a plastic injection mold facility for seven plus years next to a 3000 ton press that pumped through thousands of pounds of ABS a day. My nose and, and sensitivity to smells is shot, okay? I, 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 when I had COVID, I just hung out in my printer room printing, you know, a full set of Mando armor in ABS and um, I, I didn't smell anything and that wasn't the COVID. Um, I, 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 I don't smell these chemicals anymore. I'm completely immune to them. But, you know, I have a little guy in the house. Um, I got a wifey in the house. So when it comes to precautions I do, the way I do it is basically my printer room in the basement where I, I normally do everything is sealed up. Um, it's in the basement. It's on the far side of the house in the living area. Um, the vent in the ceiling is permanently shut off. And there's actually, I put um, foam gasket around the door. So when that room is sealed, you don't smell anything outside that room. That's how I do it. Um, now, if you have the ability to like vent um, the room to atmosphere, like if you have like, you know, um, a fume extractor or something like that where you can vent your room, that's always a good option. Um, you could do what we're gonna be doing now where I'm gonna keep all this stuff in the garage um, and hopefully it doesn't freeze in the winter. Um, so there, there are things you can do. Um, and also a lot of this stuff has to do with, it's not so much straight exposure, it's um, total exposure. So you need to think about that. It, it, it's not so much, you know, like, oh, I breathed in some fumes. I'm, I, I, I am, you know, that's it for me. It's like, no, how much fumes have you breathed in over X amount of time? So if you just, you know, set up your resin print and leave the room, you're fine. But if you work in your the room where your resin printer is all the time, you, you may want to, you know, it's all about limits, right? It's like you, you technically do get radiation exposure from eating a banana or taking a flight, um, but it's all about limits, so. So what I'm going to say is I am not a doctor. I am not uh, OSHA compliant or an OSHA regulator. I'm going to say Look up the risks and take what appropriate safety protections you believe you need to take to keep yourself and your family safe and anyone else who might be in your household. So. Answer from Diet Coke. I drink Coke Zero, but I think that still has aspartame in it. But if you actually look up the, um, the, the study on aspartame, they give like way over the normal amount to um, the rats to like get them to get cancer. So it's like way more than you actually get from like drinking a, a Diet Coke. And also, 
you need to think about it this way. If you're gonna drink a ton of Coke, okay, it's the one with the sugar that's gonna make you, you know, gain weight and have all those health issues associated with that. Is that worth then a potentially minuscule slight increase in cancer down the line? Like, potato, potato. They're both not good for you, but which one is actually worse for you? It's like, I, I, I will hearken back to a, uh, a quote from the great Jeremy Clarkson. Um, when, uh, I think it was Richard Hammond was trying to call him out for like smoking. I think it was smoking. And this, they were on like a track with like, and he's like, well, you, you race motorcycles. And he's like, yeah, he's like, okay. I will stand here on the side of the, the, the track here, chain smoking, while you race around it in your motorcycle as fast as you can go. And we'll see who kicks the bucket first. It, it, nothing's good for you. Nothing's good for you. It would need to consume at least nine to 14 cans of diet soda per day to exceed the ADA for use. Yeah. I have one can of Coke Zero a day. But again, this is a 3D printing stream. Although today, right now, we're, we're playing with lights. So I'm gonna have to be kind of careful with resin out here because my garage is a garage and I open the garage door. So there will be light pollution in here. Hey everyone, can I get an F in chat? I messed up polarization and fried my board. That's not good. Okay. Um, oh, hey, there's a manual for this. Um, you put those thingies in, you put that thingy in, um, th and that's it. Protective film. What protective film? Oh. Ooh. How many people take this off? There you go. Look, look, look. Do that LTT peel. There we go. Okay, um, let's just make sure these work and then we'll move on to the resin machine. So. Attention, the stickers, the stickers used for UV protection cover detection. It should be aligned with the, oh, there's a sensor back here. That's how it, it knows when it's on and off. So if you ever need to run these without um, the lid on for whatever reason, half the time you can kind of get away by doing it by just putting a piece of tape over the sensor. They're just light sensors. Where's the Tico lamp? Why are you saying F? Oh, I told you all to say F. Uh, where's the Tico? Um, the Tico is actually over there and um, I've been printing with it. And uh, no joke, I'm actually kind of impressed and I might do a video on it this weekend. Okay, so it's plugged in. Um, is there an on switch? Do I need to hit an on switch? I don't see no on switch. That's plugged in, that is plugged in. I've got power there. Unless these need to go to... Oh, I've got power. Hmm press and hold. Oh, there's a boot up top. Okay. So if I put that on. Okay, so that adjusts how long it goes for and I push button and it spins. Okay, cool. So that's that. And this goes how long it goes for. And I push that. Ooh, oh, it's got a light underneath. That's nice. It's got a light underneath. Cool. Very nice. Very nice. 
Okay, they work. So for now, I'll put these over here. Uh, you you want to talk about, okay, are you, are you guys and gals and folks and, and peoples, are you, do you want to be impressed? This, this blew me away. If you follow me on Twitter, you already saw it. This was printed on a Tico. Focus. Th th this was printed on a Tico. It, by no means perfect. But that was printed on a Tico. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. So, I might just do a video. I think I'm going to do a video on it. I was going to do a video on something else this weekend. But I, I think I'm just going to set up the camera and just kind of reminisce about the Tico. Go into like the history of it and whatnot, because I'm actually kind of impressed. And you know what? No joke. It, it's shit. We all know that. It's shit. Okay. But it was up to a certain point. It is the easiest printer to use that I've ever used. No joke. Up to a certain point, it is actually a really easy to use printer. And then it falls apart because it's a Tico. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I got like the one Tico that actually like happens to print. Also, Polymaker Polylight uh, PLA. It actually prints that stuff pretty good. Okay, so now we're actually going to do the resin machine and, and get a print going. Thoughts on the X1C light? The they announced an X1C light. What? I seen the P1S. There's an X1C light. There's no X1C light. Are you calling? What was it? An X1C light? Oh, the P1S. Well, the P1S is a P1P with an enclosure. That's all it is. They, uh, Bob was walking around the warehouse and found a box of extra panels. They're like, hey, let's put them back on the printer, and they did. And now you have the P1S. Um, that, that's basically all it is. It's, it's a P1P with an enclosure. Um, and if you were an early adopter of the P1P, you got the fan and the camera and all that stuff with it anyway. So when I made the joke, when I unboxed it on how you close it, you put the box back on, it, it's basically the same printer. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a US power plug. I'm in Canada, I want a Canada power plug. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the P1S, S. <laughs> yeah, people started making those jokes pretty quick. What about the X1S? Um, the only thing I, the only thing I can kind of guess about the X1S, it doesn't stand for small. It, it, it basically will be a streamlined version of the X1C. So they might change up a few things. I know like the bed sensors are trouble prone. Maybe they switch to a different system. I don't know. It's hypothetical. I don't have the machine. I, me and Bamboo, I don't think we're on speaking terms. You know, I pointed out too many faults in their machines. Um, so I don't think they're they're going to be uh, DMing. They're, they ain't in my DMs, put it that way. Um, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so is this all one piece? It is. Ah, no, okay. Companies, when you put stuff in a box, make it so you can grab the bag and pull it out of the box. Uh, and if you do do that, make sure the bag is actually strong enough to support that. Ugh. Okay, so this is a Mars 4 Max from Elegoo. Again, link in the description. And did I do the YouTube bullshit disclosure I gotta do? Um, they, they sent me this printer for free. Uh, no money's exchanged hand. They're seeing this live the same time you are. Um, the only condition is I unbox it and show it off on stream. No money's exchanged. They haven't influenced my opinion at all. They haven't told me to say anything. It is literally, hey, you want the printer? Yes, okay, here's the printer. So. 
So if you're interested in getting one of these, there is a link in the video description to their Amazon store. You can also check out their website. Um, no, why aren't you working? Main screen, there you go. No, that's it, okay. Oh, I gotta move this around one second. There we go, okay. So this is the machine here. This is Amer their American site, so American prices. So it's the Mars 4 Max 6K. Um, oh, there you go. So it's got a 9.0 inch 6K to screen, um, fancy light source, large build volume, which is 195 by 122 by 150, which is, I would say that's about medium size for a resin machine nowadays. This, there, you have the itty bitty resin machines, you got a bunch like this, and then you got the large ones. The large resin is, is something I would like to play with one day, but that is a whole nother piece. Um, it does have an air purification system, although I think that's an add-on. Um, I don't know if mine has that. It does have um, like carbon filters. You can, yeah, you can see it right there, but I think that's an add-on. Um, so it, it's a resin printer. A lot of them are kind of the same. Um, so if you've, if you've played with one, um, you, it shouldn't be like completely new to you. Um, Uh, where does the practice of adding an S to the name of a mid-year upgrade that's not a full version? Um, I don't think it's like an actual, like, thing. I know, like, cars, usually, like, the S is, like, an entry-level model. Um, it, 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 it's a sport model or something. Like, they, they make up names. Um, but it makes sense, like, for something like this, like, uh, uh, especially when you're new to the market and you have a machine, you know, you, you design the best machine you can, obviously, um, but you're gonna learn stuff along the way. So for example, a common problem with the X1 series of machines is the, um, the wire that connects the bed uh, sensors to the controller board. If it's, it, it, if it's finicky, it doesn't read right. So, hey, maybe they fix that. That's, uh, you know, you, you don't stop production, but you, you kind of adjust it. Okay. So let's get this all out. This has a pretty big, beefy base. Um, so on the side here, we do have um, uh, this connection. There's your power switch. Nice, beefy rocker, 24 volt barrel jack. On the back, we got some fans and they have filters. So that's cool. Um, nothing on this side. Uh, Balant V, Hungarian, I can't remember what the F stands for, 2490, cheers, good evening, good evening. Um, the Z is a lead screw system, uh, no ball screw, and it's riding on a big, chunky, really greased up uh, rail. It's a, a GE20 rail. And then this enclosure is metal. So this thing's got some, uh, it's got some beef. Got a bit of beef. Make maple syrup flavored resin. Don't make flavored resin. Flavored resin is a bad idea. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's kind of nice to see. They have a little um, hole in, in the enclosure lid um, with some heat sets and you can take the screws out. So if you want to hook this up to a fume extractor with like a hose, so you can, you know, actively vent the chamber you could do that also the filter goes there too so i'm assuming the filter connects but if you wanted to like attach a hose on it for fume extraction you probably could and i'm already getting all staticky from this okay so there is a manual there is a setup guide we are going to follow that um what do i think about it we already talked about it. it's a p1p with an enclosure this isn't a bamboo stream you guys keep asking about bamboos, but this is not a bamboo stream. Okay, so remove the resin tank. Are these captive? Hopefully they're captive. They are not captive, so be careful. Remove resin tank, okay. Um, I'm going to put you over here. Because the last thing you want, you don't want to get stuff on these. 
We do have a little protective film on it for now. And pro tip, hit the right button. Have a fan going. Um, I've got a, a fan just out of sight here. One, because it's, it's only 26 in here. It's not too bad. The, the insulation guy never called me back. He was supposed to come this week and he never showed up and he never called. So not too happy there. Um, but have a fan going. That prevents like dog hair and whatnot from like landing on your screen, which you don't want. Okay, remove the resin tank, lock the build plate screw, and loosen the two build plate screws until the build plate rotate freely. Okay, place the leveling card between the screen. So, okay, so let's put this build plate on. So, press firmly on the build plate when tightening the screws. Okay, should I? Should I take this film off? Does it say to take the film off? It doesn't say to take the film off. I'm going to take the film off because I have a leveling card, which is... Is this the leveling card? I'm assuming this is the leveling card. So we take that off. Please peel off this film before printing. I'm gonna peel it off from after we level. So this slides on there. This tightens this. Okay. Uh, power. Do you like fine machine stuff, for example, ball pens? I, just... I am not a pen guy. Um, there are some people on the Voron team that are, are pen people. I, I, I know. I'm kind of filling around with keyboards. I now have three mechanical keyboards. Um, they're not anything fancy. They're like off the shelf ones, but I, I'm, I'm, that's the closest I, I would say. Um, so this is that. There's the power supply. Oh, I do have a filter. I do have a filter, cool. So plug you in. Get power from over here. That ain't gonna work. I need to get an extension cable with uh, a ground. Unless I can just plug it in the wall. I'll just plug it in the wall over there. keyboard modding stream. No, as much as, you know, I, I, I find it fun to do stuff like that on, on a stream. Um, the last time I did keyboard stuff on this channel, it didn't do too good. So we're gonna avoid that. Um, do I have an extension that'll work for this? Sheet. Um, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> Let me find an extension cable. Um, where do I have an extension? That's plugged in, that's plugged in. Um, I might not have, can I, can you plug these into each other? No. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to need another extension cable. Okay, so remind me to buy another extension cable. What can I do in the meantime? Do you need a ground? Of course you need a ground. Why Why would you not need a ground? Can I plug you in? Will you reach? No, you won't reach. Or actually, you will. Okay, let's make this work. Let's make this work. Unplug you. You can come over here. Um, unplug you. Unplug you. Okay, yeah, you'll work. You go there. You go there. You come here. There we go. You come over here. You come over here. There we go. Matt Shannon gifted one community membership. Cheers. Power. It beeps. There we go. Okay, monitor, stop. There you go. Okay, good. 
Okay. So, let's see here. So I gotta loosen these. These are some big, some big screws. Yeah, I got a card right here. Oh, oh they. Okay. So I gotta go up. Uh, move up. Okay. So, place the leveling card between the build plate and the LCD screen, then click move access to zero. After a printer stops moving, press the build plate with one hand and lock the fixing screw. So this is loose, so this should be all, there we go, okay. After fixing the screws to the build plate, move to about 100 and put the resin back in and tighten the screws. Okay, so you put this sheet in. Um, set zero, home first and manual adjust, okay. Oh, I gotta home it first. Okay, so home it. Okay. It beeped at me. Why are you beeping at me? Do you hear that beep? Okay. So that's there. So put some pressure on it and tighten these screws up. So I'm just gonna lighten, tighten one, let you tighten two, torque one, torque two. There we go. And we're home. Is it weird that you enjoy the AVS smell? Um, actually kind of, yeah. So it does come pre-greased. Um, the lead screw is greased. Uh, it's only capped about the bottom, which is what you want to see. How much did I tell it to go up? That high, cool, I told you to go up all the way. So um, we got our FEP sheet here. I'm gonna take the protective film off the bottom. Take the protective film off here. And there is indexing points. So it does lock into a position. And then you tighten it down. And I put it on backwards. So, this is kind of annoying, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, there is a line that tells you how much you could fill it to. Um, make that so you could, on the back, so you can see what you're doing. It'd be nice if it was on both sides. I don't think it really matters what side's which. Um, yeah, I don't think it matters what side's which. This, this container looks pretty uniform. But, yeah. Okay, so we got that. So I've got some goodies in here. I actually have a filter. Um, once you level the bed, you need to press set zero, the current position. You need to re-level it now. What? Doesn't say that. After fixing the screws to the build plate, operate the Z axis to rise for a certain distance to put the resin tank back in place. It, it doesn't say to set zero at all. And if you're new to the channel, we follow the instructions. We do what the instructions tell us to do. It told me to go down, says move access to zero, so home it. 
After printer stops moving, press the bill plate with one hand and lock the fixing screws with the other hand. After fixing the screws to the bill plate, operate the Z-axis to rise and install the uh, tank. Doesn't say anything about setting set zero. Because when we homed it, it homes to zero. So it is zero. So what do we got here? So I got, it's USB power. Okay, open the cover on the top and take out the activated carbon. Oh. Open the package of the activated carbon and put it back in. Oh, it, it's like a, it happens to everyone at a certain age. So I got, a, I got a slug here of activated carbon, I guess. It is carbon, my hands are dirty now. Put that back in. Put the cover back on and plug the USB so you can start using it. Okay, that, okay, we got a carbon filter. That, that, okay, cool. That's actually kind of cool. Um, we do have some gloveys. I've got a USPA stick. I've got a spatula and I got some uh, masks. So let me actually look at the manual. Is there anything in here I gotta worry about? Tools, light source, that. Pre-slice test model. Yeah, we'll do we'll do the test model. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a carbon filter. So it, it, it's obviously not venting. No file, insert USB. Okay. Insert USB. So we got printing test and we got a rook model. Um, so do you guys just wanna, what time are we at right now? We are at, we got an hour and 15 minutes left. Do you want me to just print the test model and see if we can get it done on the stream itself? Or do you want me to go in and install the software and see how far we can go? I gotta feel, because of the time, I think we're just gonna do the print, the, uh, the demo print, just because it's probably gonna be short and easy and it might actually finish on stream. So I think we're, yeah, just the test model. Test print. I'll print something fancy later tonight. So the resin we're using is Elegoo's own 8K resin. Um, and we'll see if the gloves fit. Because if the glove fits, you must equip. These are the most fitting gloves I've ever actually received from a, uh, an overseas printer. And these are like definitely latex. Shake, 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 shake your body, shake your body, rat. Work, work, work. So, so this is uh, Space Gray, by the way, 8K standard polypropylene resin. Glug, 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 glug. I'm gonna fill it up to just under the max line. Oh yeah, that'll be good enough for now. Put 
that on. Okay. Print. There we go. So we got our resin here. What else we got? We got gloves, got that. These are filters. So if you ever have to pour the resin back into the jug, it's always good to run it through a filter just in case you have like a little piece of support or dog hair, you don't get it back into your, your bulk resin. Uh, we got a spatula and normally they come with two. Yeah, so you, you have a plastic spatula. This is for like getting stuff off the FEPS. So if you have a failed print, most of these machines have a setting where you can like expose the entire screen. Oh, okay, it beeps when it homes. Um, what you do is you expose the bottom of the screen. You expose the whole screen and it basically makes a, a, a solid film along the bottom of the FEP. And what that'll do is it'll grab any little piece that's kind of just floating in there and it'll stick it to that thing. And then you just go in there and peel it out with this. Um, that's how you clean the tank. Um, and you should do it every so often because you never know what's in there. Um, this is how you get it off the build plate. So you got two spatulas, some manuals, gloves. These are actual like legit masks. Like they're not, they're not N95 rated, but they're that. And we have a whole bunch of extra screws, a whole extra set of screws. So nice. Uh, Dude, that little plastic scraper will scratch the FEP. I've used them a few times and I haven't scratched any FEP yet. Get a silicone one. Maybe the one I'm using is silicone. I don't know. I have one that I use and it hasn't been an issue so far. So here's something that's not fun, okay? This is why, why don't you recycle your Benchies? We've unboxed this resin machine and the wash and cure station. And there is all the garbage right there. All that, that's all the garbage from it. Um, it is what it is. So unfortunately you're not gonna be able to see much and this, oh, this is a three hour print. Yeah, this isn't gonna finish on stream. We'll let it go for a bit, then we'll pause it, bring it up and see what we see. How, how am I looking? I'm really blown out. Am I really like pasty white? Cause I got the light right there to try and get more lighting. I need to get more lighting in here. That's what I need. Uh, the seam of the injection mold of the scraper is built right into the... Yeah. Well, yeah, you're gonna have a knit line or yeah, you're gonna have a seal off line. I will say I'm not smelling it at all. Mid plague. <laughs> well, let's see here. I, I, Cause that's, that's one of the things I still got to sort out out here is lighting. So this is just studio lights shining on me. I got to get a bit brighter light for the main one. That's what it is without the overhead. And then this is with the overhead lighting on. They've only got the two overhead lights and they're like back here. I need, I need more lighting up there over the workbench. Drink a choice today. Um, I'm drinking it out of my, my G Fuel cup, but today is, um, which gamer subs is it? Uh, we've got a few different flavor. I think there's a blowhole one. Yeah, blowhole blast. Although I will say brand risk is, is my favorite so far. Swig from the resin bottle. I don't think resin looks that delicious. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it run for a bit and then I'll pause it. And when it pauses, it comes up out of the resin. You can take a look and hopefully we have something stuck there. So resin machines, they, they definitely are their own thing. Um, 
If, if you're looking to get in 3D printing, unless you come to me and you go, hey, I'm looking to get in 3D printing. I'm a huge Warhammer fan and I love pissing off Game Workshop lawyers. Get a resin machine then, okay? Or you play D&D &D and you're looking to make minifigures. If you're going into it and it's like, you, you what you wanna do is make highly detailed small models, go, go into resin. It makes a lot of sense. But if you're just like, ah, you know, there, I seen some things, I kinda wanna, you know, mean prints. I saw somebody posted something funny on Twitter and I wanna make that. FDM is probably gonna be your thing. Um, the thing is with resin though, there's a lot of relatively well-priced entry-level machines. Um, like you, you saw the setup for this. It, it's literally connect one thing, tighten a bolt, loose the two bolts, turn it on, tell it to home, tighten those two bolts, put a bed in it, fill it with resin, you're good. Um, I don't know what slicer, what slicer does Elegoo ship with? Um, I can't pull the slicer off the SD card because it's plugged in, but um, slicing is gonna be the biggest hurdle with resin usually. Um, the slicers are nowhere near as user-friendly and easy to use and feature-rich as a FDM slicer. Because um, resin machines are pretty much all Cheeto box, which is a closed ecosystem, unfortunately, which, Considering all you're doing is taking an STL and converting it to a bunch of images, how is resin not more open source? Like, all, all the slicer does is just, you don't even need G-code, it's just a bunch of images, because it's just a black and white image that the LCD exposes. And then you tell it to move up and move down. So move up, move down, expose image. Move up, move down, expose image. I don't know how that hasn't been, why oh, it, it's more open source. And the slicer, same with the slicers. I know it's a controller board, but I'm like, I'm surprised there isn't more open source resin options. Because there are, they're just really, they are, they are nowhere near as good as like, and the problem is like why, people have asked, why don't you see DIY resin? Because this machine is $269, nice, uh, $269.99. There is no way you could build anything comparable to that in the same price point. And for 269, you get a lot of resin and you get the filter, which is really nice. I don't know how long this filter will last. Um, do they say, is there a lifespan on these filters? Let's take a look. Cause it is activated carbon. It's literally just a chunk of carbon, um, which that'd be kind of cool to see how it handles heat. Um, Cause it's like a, a thing. Um, Let's see, accessories and parts, post plus spare parts, mini air purifier, is that it? Or, no, it's USB. Yeah, it's this, okay. So $28 US, but how much is the, oh, that's two of them. So $28 for two of them. Can you just buy the carbon though? Uh, okay, plug and play, more efficient. The activated carbon lasts for over one year and can be replaced. Oh! Do I smell the resin? I don't. It, it, I don't smell the resin. I don't even hear the fan. Like... Those settings, bottom layer, exposure, okay. Like I'm, I've got a fan, like I got a normal, like just, you know, fan fan, just going over there. I don't. This machine's pretty quiet. Uh, DLP resin printers are using Texas Instrument Tech, so there's a lot of hope for more hobbies or DIY those. Okay. Um, I think there is a, a DLP version of this machine too. Um, yeah, they have, okay, so this is the Mars 4 Max 6K, which is 269, um, but they have a DLP version of this, which is 439. So DLP lasts longer, right? And it's, is it more, it lasts longer and it's higher detail. Am I right?
Carbon filter paint mask only lasts six hours. Um, I don't know. This thing is pretty much a slug of carbon um, with like grids through it. It looks like a ISO grid almost like, um, yeah, it, it's a slug of carbon with a bunch of holes through the middle. Um, so I'm assuming because it's actually like physical carbon, it might last longer. I don't know. I don't know. Also, it, I, I, I don't know. As long as it doesn't stink up the place, I'm happy. Several times the contrast, it's perfect or smaller, more detail prints. Okay. How long does the screen last? Here's the thing. Um, I don't know. I've never worn out a resin printer, but I don't do a ton of resin, so. Isn't resin printing fun? This is the problem with resin printing. It's like, this is why I, I did the unboxing of the wash and cure station first. It's because once it gets to the point of the live stream where it's like, hey, we're showing off how the resin printer prints. It's like, um, Yeah. <laughs> Have I worn out an FDM printer? Um, no, I've killed a few bearings over the years, but those are consumable, so. Hi, Jose. But I guess that's kind of what you want. You just want it to just do its thing, and it seems to be doing its thing. Uh, I could pause the print. I can't, I'm gonna let it go for a bit. Normally what you do and what I do if I'm doing resin printing, um, after it does the first layer, you could actually hear it peel up from the FEP. Um, the, Cause the first few layers are overexposed. So they stick a little bit more to the FEP. So if you hear a peeling noise on those first few layers, usually that's a good sign. Um, yeah, paint the door time. I still haven't picked out a color, but I did find a, a scrap piece of black acrylic from I think the Trident because um, they sent me the wrong size. So I do have a piece of acrylic there, so I need to get a bigger one, but I want to basically get a two foot by three foot sheet of acrylic to put on the door like right here so I can sticker bomb it. I think that's what we're going to do. So get like a two, two by three foot sheet of black acrylic, mount it to the door and then sticker bomb it. And just leave the door white. What are we printing? We're printing a rook. Which, considering we're building a rook tomorrow, or we're doing the electrical on a rook tomorrow, it's kind of fitting. I am really blown out with this light. Let me turn this down. There we go. There we go. Fingerprint. Well, it's going to be covered with stickers, so. You need to tell more lighting. I know, I only have like the, the one studio light, which is like almost dead. That's why I, I'm actually waiting on a replacement to come in. It was supposed to be in yesterday. Um, but yeah, I need to get more studio lighting out here. Because really, I should have this one off too. The problem is I gotta do it with a freaking stick every time I do it. There we go. There we go. Uh, which upgraded lens you get for your Sony recently? Uh, nothing for this one. This is the kit lens. This is my A5100, which is only 1080p, which kind of sucks that when I do the punch in, we lose resolution. Um, I much prefer a 4K for the main camera, but I only got two and the one is the video camera. Um, I did pick up a new lens for the video camera, like the camera I use for recording videos, um, which I actually have over here because I've been recording stuff. Um, this is the setup I use for videos. Um, so this is a Sony a6400 and I use a Sigma 18 to 50 lens. Um, it's, it's a manual um, um, zoom lens, um, but it's got really good autofocus because it's a, a Sigma. Um, so this is, the can this is what I use for filming actual videos. So I've been filming stuff for the uh, Tico, so I might do a Tico video, um, but this is what I use for videos. I don't use this for streaming because it, it's it's on its own tripod. It, it, it's, it's fully set up for videos and it's just easier to grab and go when you have a dedicated video camera instead of having to like 
Oh, I want to film a video. Okay, I got to take the uh, the camera off the mount that I use for streaming. Take the dummy battery out. Hopefully, don't break the micro USB or micro HDMI connector, um, and do all that. So it, it's I keep a separate vit camera just for video stuff. Um, and then the camera downstairs in the streaming room downstairs is an A6300 um, with a Sigma 16, which I may get a Sigma 16 for this one. Um, so I'm at 16 mil right now. Um, and if you're wondering how far away the lens is with my LTT screwdriver, and if I reach out, I can right there, I'm about an inch away from the lens. So this is a 16 mil. So if I were to get a dedicated lens for this camera two out here, um, I would want 16 or smaller. The problem is if I go with like, Sony makes it an 11 mil, which means I could be close to the camera because wild field of view, but with a wider field of view, you get fisheye and I don't want too much fisheye, so. Maybe you should get an industrial power cube hanging from the ceiling. Um, I do have a power outlet right there. I could do that. Um, if I was smart, what I would do is just run an extra, I just need to get an extra extension cable. I, I was gonna, I'm gonna put a countertop on this desk. So right now this is this desk, this um, toolbox, I'm gonna put a countertop on it. I just need to buy one. I'm gonna mount a power bar to this. So this will have its own power bar and then I'll plug it into a wall on a feeder cable. So th this will have its own power bar at some point. I just haven't gotten around to it. Athena resin printer, supposed to be module, Kickstarter. The moment I see Kickstarter, I am just... Like, I'm just, no. Testing 12K pre-production. Like, it, it's, it's, it's Kickstarter, guys. It's a thousand dollar machine too. You can buy four of these for the cost of this. Sixty percent faster than what? Developed in Canada. Ooh. I don't know. It just Kickstarter is just so. I don't know. Built by reputable oh yeah then if it's a reputable company that is investing in something because they believe it will make a profit why do they need kickstarter kickstarter is to help you know small indie teams that don't have a way of getting the funding if you're a reputable company it's like when creality did kickstarter even bamboo didn't need to do kickstarter like the problem you know what you know what most of these big companies use kickstarter for nowadays it's they get vc funding but VC funding folks want their money back, okay? They invested, they need their money by a certain date. So what they do is they launch a Kickstarter so that they can make money early. So instead of making money when they sell the printers, they make the money before they ship the printers. So they could pay back the VC people before they start getting interest and whatnot. So they're not actually using your money to fund development because that's already been paid for. They're just doing that so they could pay off the VC people. like. When, when Bamboo did their, their Kickstarter, they already had all the tooling and the machining and everything to build the printers. They had the printers. They just wanted to get the money early. And hey, if it works, it works. Like Creality did a kick fund. Why did Creality need to do a Kickstarter? Like, come on. Why did Creality need to do a Kickstarter? It's just so they can get money early. And free marketing. Yeah, true. It's a big marketing thing. It doesn't cost them anything extra and they make money early. I just, big companies doing Kickstarter just irks me. Cause they're basically just taking advantage of people. It, it's, it's like pre-ordering a video game. It's all digital. Why are you bothering? Pre if, if, if the product will actually be a decent product, you'll be able to buy it at retail. It watches the stress on the build arm to know when it exposed the layer. Ooh. Kickstarter takes a decent cut. Yeah, what is the cut Kickstarter takes from a uh, thing? Now, I'm saying this also as I have a Tico sitting over here, so we all know how uh, 
that goes. My wife and I are trying to figure out why people sell STL packages through Kickstarter. So if you're talking about like the, um, I, I think there's a few games, a few board games do Kickstarter um, uh, and a few other things. It, it's mostly, it's free exposure. It's basically just free exposure, free exposure, free marketing. And then, cause if you just go and sell, try and sell a package of stuff on cults, it just gets buried. But if you put it on Kickstarter, it, it, it's, you could just, it's, it's advertising. It's just another platform to advertise it on. Um, plus you could sell it early on Kickstarter while you're still developing. So if you got the idea for it, you can put that out there and that can hopefully fund development. So if you're not the only one modeling something and you need to buy, you know, pay for extra people to model stuff or stuff like that, you can use the funds raised from Kickstarter to pay, you know, pay that. So. It, it, it's kind of like there, there's like, you know, it's it's just an alternative way. So when you use Kickstarter, right? Like say, hey, I came up with an idea for a board game that uses 3D printed pieces, okay? Um, so I can't CAD to save my butt. So what I did was I went on Fiverr or I commissioned somebody to design a few of the pieces, okay? So to design a few of the pieces, I got like some depth, I made a, a, an example of the box art, and uh, the board game, and I, I've kind of like, I've got like the, the 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 initial thing, but I need like, I need more. Well, you know, I think this is gonna work. I, I've played the game with a few friends using dummy pieces and hey, this is gonna work, but I wanna sell this. I wanna sell this as like a thing where you, you buy the game, you get the STLs and you print the pieces yourself, right? So what I do is I, I launch a Kickstarter. Hey, this is my idea, here's an example. Um, but I need funding so that we can, you know, I can get better modelers to design the rest of these pieces and redesign the pieces I have with higher detail and blah, 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 and get, and get artists to illustrate the manual and blah, 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 blah. And Kickstarter, you go there, you do your, 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 your business plan and hey, hopefully you raise some money and hey, if we raise this much, um, all the models will be at this resolution. And if we raise this much, oh, there'll be even double the models. There'll be expansion models and whatnot. Like so there, there are proper ways you can use Kickstarter. I don't have anything per se wrong against Kickstarter. It's just how some larger companies are using Kickstarter. I'm not a huge fan of. It's to help kickstart an idea, not help established company just get paid early. Like so. Kickstarter is used by some peeps to get bank loans. Yeah, that's the thing. Back in the day, you would go to your bank. Hey, I need a loan. I've got a business idea. And, you know, things have changed, but that's how it used to be. I want to I want to start a business. Here's my proposal. And the bank would, you know, give you a loan or not. Now, you know, people fall for NFTs. So you could just get money easier from people on the internet. A lot less work involved. Athena is in a big company. This is their first product. Uh, somebody was telling me they're from an established company earlier. Where are they even based out of? Where are they based out of? Probably Vancouver, knowing my luck. Concepts 3D system. Oh, by the way, I got rid of the shitty keyboard because I bought a new keyboard um, on Prime Day. So I took my old keyboard that was in the computer room and put it out here. So now I actually have a proper keyboard and I can type. Um, where are... Concepts 3D. Where are you about? Uh... I don't know where you're at, contact. Oh, they're in Lake Country, BC. There you go. What about Wormwood using, I, who's Wormwood? Oh, the OEM is established, okay. Kickstarter is now cheap promotion for Creality. Yeah, cheap promotion for cheap printers.
I laser cut 1,000 specialized rulers for a customer who did the Kickstarter. We went well for the guy, but not every Kickstarter success. That is true, and it's always a risk. It's, it's like going to a bank with a business idea. Hey, here's my proposal. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. That is what it is. Um, is someone gonna play? Okay, this is really annoying. This is really annoying. YouTube, this is really annoying. Okay, so how, how do I share this without sharing? Okay, there we go. So this is chat. Hi chat, say hi to yourself. Look, this stupid heart thing, it, it, go away. I don't wanna see this because it, it hides like some of the chat on the first description. Like when you type a long sentence, this stupid thing hides some of it. So like rumor is slowly becoming not a place. So I couldn't see the not a part. I'm like, that's super annoying. Go away. on the new stream. I really like this setup and I need to sort out the uh, the AC issue because in terms of AC, we have no AC, um, but it hasn't been too hot lately. Like it's only 27.8 degrees Celsius with 55% humidity in here. Um, speaking of, uh, where is it? Oh, here we go. Fate has sent me a care package. So if you notice, I got Toasty Boy out here with the, uh, the the, 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 the the dry box because they sent me some fun stuff so i've got i don't leak my address i've got um 25 percent carbon fiber reinforced reinforced co-extrusion paht the high tech nylon um flame retardant polycarbonate glass fiber reinforced abs 25 percent glass fiber reinforced abs um 25 glass fiber reinforced clo extrusion high temp nylon and 20 15% carbon fiber reinforced PET not PETG PET so I need I need a project I'm gonna try and print quadcopter frames with some of that stuff did I ever use the fadus extruder the apsu um no actually i was gonna put it in the v1 and that just never happened i might get around to that i've i've had a bunch of ideas that just kind of got sidelined over the past two months because of everything going on with the garage reno and then traveling and whatnot um so yeah so i've got toasty boy here which is a v1.8 all enclosed but the spring steel in here is literally just spring steel. I've got nothing on it. So the plan is I can use um, whatever glue or adhesive like nylons and whatever used best on this. I've got a few, uh, some people have given me some uh, stuff to try out. So I got that. Okay, let's pause this print. Uh, Cause what time is it? It's 12.15. So this would be enough to tell us if the print's actually coming along. Um, and we can fix it if it has it. Arise. Oh, we got something. Yep. We've got something stuck to the bed. Back to printing. We're good. Ever try that Frank Goose stuff? Um, two things. I'm gonna run downstairs and grab what I was given to try out. And then I do have, um, and find the ISO. So while this is doing that, you guys can enjoy that. I'll be back in one second.
That's not it. Well, that's one of them. I thought I had another bag of stuff. Where'd I put it? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I got, I got a bunch of stuff from... Uh... So Pantheon gave me this stuff. They're... They're nylon and copoly bed prep. So Pantheon gave me this to try out. Um, the folks at the Annex booth, um, remember the, the, the guy who gave me the, um, the Tico um, has this stuff. This is from North Print 3D. It's 3D printer bed adhesive, standard and strong. Um, what else? Oh, uh, chap, Chuck Hellebuck gave me his bed leveler, bed leveler two. Um, so we're going to try that out on, um, we're going to use this to level the bed on the Rook. Um, I don't know what these stickers are about. Does, does anyone know what these stickers are about? I can't, I, I don't know. I got a bunch of these. Um, oh, this, this is a fun sticker. Boron contains EBB 36V 1.1. Do not leave unattended while in DFU mode. If you know, you know. Yeah, a few goodies. Let's see. So yeah, so I got I got these bed adhesive stuff. So I'm gonna try out all this stuff. The same stuff as Frank Goo, mostly PVP K30 for normal and K90. Um, made in Canada from domestic and imported ingredients. That's all I got. There is a QR code on it though, so let's let's see what the QR code says. Remember when you had to download a separate app to use a QR code? Remember those days? Bed adhesive, specially formula used in FFF, 3D. I don't like FFF. FDM is so much nicer to say. I don't like FFF. I, I, I hate we can't say it F, FDM in a professional environment. Uh, standard, which is most strong, high adhesion bare, uncoated bare steel. Strong will destroy glass and PI covered bed sheets. Okay, so use strong on, on spare steel. How to apply, how to renew. Oh, here we go. Strong uh, SDS PDF. Wow, it's got a whole MSDS sheet. Nice. Good to see. And then I thought I had more. I've only got like two of these. I only got like two liter or one liter of ISO. So I got to go buy ISO. So where do you get bulk ISO in Canada? Because normally I just buy the stuff at Costco, but I got to get seven liters of it. So... So much fun. So don't forget, uh, link in the video description if you want to enter to win some Polymaker filament. We do a giveaway at the end of every stream. Um, does Walmart carry pure ISO? Because normally I buy it at Costco. So Costco sells um, four packs of these bottles. So it's two liters total of 99% isopropyl, but it's like 20 bucks. Um, I think anything better than 70. Well, Amazon, I don't know if Amazon Canada carries that stuff. Let me check. Yeah, Amazon, yeah. Yeah, Walmart has small bottles, so. Isopropyl alcohol. <sighs> MG Chemicals, one liter for 20 bucks. No, no. Four four liters for 160. I don't want to spend 160. Four pack 500. Yeah, see, this is half price at Costco. Yeah, I'll probably have to go to Costco. Four liters USB grade isopropyl. Yeah, so. Is there a quote? No, you can. Granger is in Canada. Um,
Okay, so purple. Uh, so 205 liters of it is two grand. I don't need that much. 20 liter pails, 200 bucks. Four liters is 73. One liter is 20. Okay. Still cheaper at Costco. Just dropped a link for it. Okay, but that's Amazon.com, not Shammy. I live in Canada. I had a gallon for 90 at the hardware store. Yeah, I, I, I gotta check the hardware store. I haven't checked a local hardware store. Two for 500 for $5. Oof. Yeah, you guys are lucky shit's cheap in the States. The, the, that is Costco stuff. That's that is the Costco stuff. It just it's it works out to about ten fifteen dollars a liter. So yeah, I'm in Canada, so all you American prices don't make sense. What also really sucks is open sauces this weekend, and everyone and their grandma got to go. And here I am, in my garage, not at open sauce. LTX is in like two weeks. I ain't going to that either. Brian had to buy several hundred gallons of glycol. He said it was something like 10 grand. Oh, I believe it though. I believe it. How many hours will it drive to LTX be? Um, I'll let you know in a second here. Once Google Maps decides to load. Isn't resin cool? Look at the resin printer, guys. Elugu sent this. Go check them out, link in the description. Even if you don't buy it, just go check out the links because it makes my numbers look better because a bunch of you all went to look at it and they're, they're tracking that. Why won't Google Maps load? Okay, so to get to um, Vancouver, um, if I were to leave right now, would be 37 hours of nonstop driving. Um, yeah, 37 hours, roughly, so. So needless to say, I'm not driving to LTX. Uh, are there any multi-material AMS units that can handle TPU? Depends. Um, I think if I remember correctly, the 3D Chameleon actually can. Um, the issue with the AMS is the feed path is very constrained and TPU jams up in it. Then you say this printer was 280? Well, I'm just going off by the numbers on their site here. So Mars, there you go. Mars Max, Mars 4 Max 6K, 269 USD. Off their site. Methylated spirits in Australia. Methyl hydrate. Hmm, I'll have to take a look. 
When you think of Urkfa uh, today, would you recommend something else? Um, I don't do a ton of multicolor. Here's the thing. I don't do a lot of multicolor prints. Um, I may play with, I think I'm gonna start playing with Hue Forge. I'm waiting on Polymaker is apparently, I'm pretty sure I remember reading it somewhere. They were gonna come out with like a pack of filament specifically for Hue Forge. Um, so I'll, I'll snag that and then I'll try Hue Forge. Um, but like, I don't do a lot of multicolor prints. So I've got the AMS hooked up to my uh, X1C, and that's pretty much my go-to if I want to do multicolor. Beyond that, I don't really do multicolor. Like, I had the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder on my Switch Wire. When was the last time you saw me print on my Switch Wire? Um, I, 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 I just don't use it. Um, it's Hue Forge. Uh, David, go watch Joel's video today. Joel just put a video out on Hue Forge, not Hero Forge. Hue Forge. It allows you to basically use your printer as like a CYMK type. Um, it, it allows you to 3D print pictures using like a, a few colors and different thicknesses and layers and bl color bleed through. It actually works pretty cool. Um, if you, Joel did a video on it today. Go watch Joel's video. Yeah, it, it's really cool and it's, I, I saw a bunch of people playing with it um, on like Twitter and I was like, oh, that's cool. But I don't do multicolor, so I didn't really care too much. But then I actually saw some of these prints like um, at Murph and I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. That, that's pretty cool. Um, one second here. Let me connect to my network. Network. Uh, imports. Oh, why are you alphabetical? Uh, three. Three. You. Icons. The only problem with this setup is my main monitor is kind of far away. So I'm like, that's why I'm like, eh. Do the K1 Max first use? Why are you sending those to less known YouTubers? Um, well, considering me and Joel and a few other higher profile, well, I want to call myself high profile, but um, are still waiting on their original K1 um, because they know we'll nitpick them too much. This is Hugh Forge. So these are only like two or three millimeters thick, but you basically print with a few different colors. It looks a lot like 1980s video game art, like like pixel art, where you only have like a few colors to work with and you kind of just like use blending and like a few different tricks to get your thing. But it's really cool because it gives it like a weird depth look to it. Um, so that's what, that, those are all printed with Hueforge like screen yeah it's kind of like screen printing so what's the output it's g-code yeah it uses transparency yeah so it uses like thinner layers to like just kind of like mix and match colors um patrick won't review so let me pull up my email here uh reality uh, new product k1 so i last spoke to creality hello has there been any new shipping one the cards there we go. Um, so last time I got any contact from Creality was May 18th. And it was, I sincerely apologize for not being able to send a K1 after Labor Day, uh, Chinese Labor Day. Um, small issues with initial batch. With prompt as the proponent ship is Please be assured that we are actively working on resolving 
this problem to avoid them appearing in mass production. You know, we've already are selling these machines. Um, I will surely arrange one for you ready in great condition. I don't want a great condition one. I want a normal one that like Bob would buy, right? I don't want a cherry picked one. Um, and that that's the last I got from him. I haven't heard a thing. I've, I've emailed him twice since then like, hey, any updates? And yeah, nothing since. Um, I don't know why people would buy a Creality K1. I, I, it's a first gen product from Creality on not something they've done a million times. So, still doing the promo? I don't know. Last I heard, um, Creality was working on like a, a, a specific pack, like a, a Hue Forge pack of filament. Um, so if you wanted to get into it, it would make sense. Literally now my inbox, K1 Max arrives in stock. Like who got K1s? I don't have a K1. Let's go on YouTube. Who got a K1? Reality, K1 Max. Who got a K1 Max? Um, so, and, and I'm not like calling out anyone here. I'm just seeing who has one. Um, 3D Printing Canada, Lost in Tech. Uh, no, Nathan doesn't have one. Creality K1 at TFT Chicago. This machine they had at, 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 the, at Rapid was a joke. This machine was like, they had to take a Dremel to like make clearances for some of this. Which one should you buy, K1 or K1 Max? Neither. Um, yeah, like they still haven't solved the drag chain. The drag chain on the K1 Max continuously rubs on the X-axis. And the 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 Bowden tube goes through the drag chain and it's it, it it's too much of a bend to make the turn. <laughs> K1 Neo and V2 will be out in the next nine months, yeah. It kinda isn't Corelli's been doing core XY. It's a completely just because one core XY is not another core XY and They've been doing Clipper since the tonic pad. They've been, how do I word this in a, in a, in a because I, I go into these shows, there's kids that watch my channel. Um, Creality has been fucking up Clipper um, since the sonic pad. They don't know what they're doing. Remember their first version of the sonic pad assumed you were plugging into a Creality machine. So if you plugged it into any other machine, it would turn random pins on, which could include a hot end. Um, I don't trust their implementation of Clipper as far as I can throw their machines. And considering the only machine I have from them is in like a dozen parts in a box right now, it'd be really annoying to throw it. Plus, you know, they're violating the open source license, so you really shouldn't be supporting it anyways. They remove the ability to jailbreak the machines and you have to have full Clipper. Yeah, like here's the thing, like, they're, they're completely violating the license. They don't know what they're doing. I don't trust them to know what they're doing with Clipper because they obviously don't know what they're doing. So yeah, I, I, if I had a K1 machine, who knows what they do when they, you, you do an update on it, who knows what that update is? You know, what's how's their network security? So when's the next Rook? Tomorrow. So. Oh, and speaking of, on, on Tuesday, yeah. we got this. So starting on Tuesday, it's Bruce Day. It's Bruce Day. <laughs> a couple days ago, somebody asked me what I can reuse from a crowd to CR10 most answer was a power cord. That's true. Um, the other day, somebody posted on Twitter a picture of a, I think it was a CR10 controller board. And this was an 8-bit one, not like any newer one. And they're like, what can I do with this? And I, I posted like, in the bin. And people are like, it's not being serious. And I'm like, no, it's being serious. It's absolutely, it's it's complete junk. Throw it out. There's no point in hanging on to it. So. Did I get, I got a black one. Because everyone has an orange one. So I went with a black one. Um, I was tempted to actually reprint the parts in ABS right from the start. Um... But what I kind of want to do is build it and try and print a bunch of ABS on it and see if we have any part fails. So.
I'd buy a K1 just to throw out the electronics, put it out. Then just build, there There are DIY Quark's Y machines you can get for under $1,000. Build one of those instead. I would rather, much rather build like a budget Seabor Trident kit than, than buy a Creality K1 and then spend how much time, sweat and tears turning it into a proper machine. Like, like how, how much is a Seabor kit? Seabor. Oh, hey, resin machine. Go check them out. Link in the description. <laughs> this is a problem with resin. It's like, it, it's I, like, oh, uh, look, look. It, 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 it's just doing the thing. It, we're almost at the top, so you can almost see what it's printing. <laughs> so I don't do resin that much on stream. Okay, Seabor. So they make really budget cheap kits that aren't great, but you know what? They're cheap kits. Um, do they do a trident kit? Oh, they, oh, no, they do a trident kit. Okay, there you go. Um, you know, these are LDO pitchers. Not 899, okay. So 300, don't, don't build a 350 trident. This down here is a 350 trident. Don't build a 350 trident. So there you go, 899, is that US? I'm assuming that's US. So $900 for a Trident kit. Or actually, no, if you want to build a Trident, um, let me see here, where is it? On the Discord, I have a deals channel now. So if you, if you, if we, we have a hot deals channel. So if you're on the Discord, um, deals and whatnot, uh, where is it, where is it? There you go. Um, Matter Hackers, LDO kit, $300 off. So join the Discord if you want to if you want to build a Trident, a 250 Trident LDO kit, $9.99 for Matter Hackers. There you go, under a thousand dollars US, and it's a Trident, which is a good solid machine that you have full control over it. And you can do whatever you want, and you don't have to worry about Creality just not supporting Clipper anymore, or that version of Clipper and not putting out updates because they all run version 10 of Clipper, so you don't get Camp and you don't get any of the fancy new stuff. So there you go, $9.99. That's actually a really good price. I kind of want to build another Trident. Like a 250 Trident. It's doing the thing. I don't smell any resin. I don't smell any resin. So that's good. Have you seen Magic Phoenixes? I have not. I have not. So this is the bed level, the E level or two. So apparently it's a lot more accurate than the other one. So we're gonna be using this to level the bed on the, uh, the rook, just to try it out. And I got a Filament Friday sticker, yay. I want a 250 Trident, who makes the best kit? If, you, if you're asking me which Voron kit to buy, the only one that I have no problem saying go buy is the LDO kits. They're the ones I've built the most, um, and they're the ones I trust the most. Um, so... open air printing on the fruit set. No, I want to try and enclose it. I'm going to enclose it in something. And no, I'm not buying the Prusa enclosure. That thing is way too overpriced. And the clear solar. So this resin right here, standard photopolymer resin, UV length, 405 nanometers when printing mono. Da, da. 
Layer exposure time 3.5 seconds, bottom exposure time 35 seconds. Recommended temperature 20 to 25 C. 28.4 in here. It's gonna be fun trying to do resin out here in the winter. LDO doesn't offer a 250. The problem with the 250, I love 250. My, my most used Voron is a 250, okay? The problem is it, it, the 300 makes more sense to more people. If you don't know what size to build, build a 300. Um, the, 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 the 300 I got is right here. Boom, that's a 300. So that, that's a 300. This is a 350 Trident. Um, so 350X, 350Y, it's only 250 on the Z though, because it's a uh, stock. Um, LDO's 300 Trident is 300 cubed. Um, so it's a little bit taller. This is a 250 Rat Rick. It's a, it's a chunky boy. And I'm gonna have to raise this whole shelf up so I can fit a rep rack turntable underneath it. Am I gonna print the Mark IV parts? No, we're gonna build the kit as is. So at first we're gonna build it as is, and I may swap some parts out down the line. 250 does not feel like... Here's the thing, the majority of stuff I print fits on a 250. Um, very rarely do I need bigger than 250 for a single print. Like if you're printing printer parts, it, it, you just... 200 rat rig. Did I say? Yeah, that's a 200 rat rig. It's a tank boy. Yeah, it's the heaviest printer I own is a 200 millimeter rat rig V core 3. Point one. Um, it, it's 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 thick. Is it printing yet? It's been printing for the past hour. You can see it. The bed goes up and the bed goes down, and then the bed goes up and then the bed goes down. It's a resin printer. It, it's yeah. That's why it's kind of like an unbox and chill <laughs> stream. Because once you get it set up and it starts printing, you're like, cool. Um, we have a spatula. Look, 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 it's a spatula. It's a spatula. Um, we've got some masks. I've got a filter. Um, I got a wash and cure station, which actually I should probably set that up. Where are we gonna set it? We're gonna set the wash and cure up over here. So. Okay, so what do I got here? I got a GoPro. Why do I have a GoPro? Oh, because I was recording the time. Time lapse. Actually. Let, let's pull let's pull the time lapse footage off the GoPro for the Tico. Yeah. Resin is not exciting. No, re, it, it's funny the 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 system, the 3D printing system that makes the best looking prints is the most boring to watch, and least exciting. And it, by some like by some descriptors, the simplest too. Okay, I know I have a card reader out here. I have to find the card reader. There's the card reader. Do I have a thing to plug it in out here? No, I gotta... There. There we go. There's a problem with the drive, scan and fix. So it's on a Seabor. I've never built a Seabor kit, so I can't really say. Um, a V0 or V02 point whatever, R whatever. A V0 is a fine build. But I've never built a Seabor kit, so I can't really comment on a Seabor kit. Um, hardware wise, probably fine. You may have some cheap bearings and some of the fans may die on you, but like, it does the thing. You tell it to make plastic boat, it'll make a plastic boat. So. I don't get the fascination. It's just a different design. It's just, just a different design. barely play that. Do I have VLC on here? Open with... I need to get VLC. And speed up. VLC. Download. 
DLC. That first layer gap. It's called the brim or raft. <laughs> You know, the form of photos. What? Oh, photo spent. Oh, hi. Hi, photos. Do, 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 do. Install. But yeah, I, I am legit impressed that the Tico prints as good as it does. It, 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 don't get me wrong. Shite. It, it is shite. I know. Right? Going on here. Ah! Okay, let's try this again. speed that's that speed ah. okay well maybe I shouldn't be doing it off an SD card let oh it's because this is a really shit SD card one second here one second here. Let me let me. Or it's not an SD card. It's it's a the reader is very slow. Oh yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, I can only pull files off at like ten megabits a second. It's a really crappy reader. <laughs> Talk me out of a five hundred millimeter rat rig. Okay, John. Um, how big are the doorways in your house? And uh, do you have a A-frame, the, the kind they use to pull engines out of cars? Any plans for load cells in a Voron? Yeah, we tried that years ago and abandoned it because it wasn't reliable enough. Like, are you talking under the bed? Or are you talking like a strain gauge in the tool head? Because we tried them under the bed and it ran into reliability issues and consistency issues. So we abandoned it. And Voron tap works too good <laughs> on the tool head. It was played with ages ago. Like somebody played with it. I can't remember who, but it, it tap is just so much simpler. Like tap started kind of like that and evolved into its current thing. Because remember, everything on a Voron is off the shelf components, nothing custom. So is it in bamboo K reliable? I don't know. I, my bamboo is throwing errors again with leveling. Oh, nope, nope. Yeah, go inside and get dressed. <laughs> no, you know how to get dressed. Go get dressed. Help me get dressed. No. You can't come out here. Somebody's got his bathing suit on and wants to get dressed. So that means they're probably out back playing with water. <laughs> Joy of children, yeah. Uh, debating I want to be a heretic and put Eva on my Vorons or now. Um, Voron isn't designed for Eva. So if you put Eva on it, the problem with Eva is Eva envelops both sides of the extrusion on your X axis. So you're, you're gonna lose X, Y motion. You're gonna lose Y motion with Eva. Um, so you're gonna lose print volume. Like the, the, the Voron tool is designed the way it is because it can't have anything behind the extrusion without losing space. Voron is designed to be as space efficient as possible. So. Having tap in the tool head doesn't seem simple. It, you know, it's not so much about simplicity, but actual functional reliability. We, we've tried sensors in the bed. They are not that reliable. They they fail and drift and we, we've tried it. I've got a, 
I've got a box in the basement of load cells because we tried them at some point and they just never worked right. Um, yeah. They're, they're too finicky. Tap, while slightly more complicated, is, is a extremely robust, simple, repeatable system. So. Prusa now have sensors in the head, so try that. Prusa has a completely custom sensor and a completely custom machine tool head. You'll see it when we get to the build. It's not an off-the-shelf solution. That's the problem is Prusa have a completely custom solution designed specifically for their specific use case. That, that, that's not what Voron is. Voron is off the shelf. Like, yes, everyone's using custom uh, optical sensors, but you can do Voron tap with literally just a, a micro switch. You don't need a fancy PCB in the tool head to do tap. Is there much of an improvement? Not so much, Jay Cannon. The, the biggest improvement you'll see going from clicky to tap is just the simplicity. Um, tap is just a Z switch. It's just your, 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 your Z switch. You don't have to worry about macros. You don't have to worry about offsets or configuring. Um, tap is just tap. Like the thing I like about tap is also the whole tool head moves. So if you have something in the bed and you home it, as long as you bump that, you'll home and you won't crash. So. If you're like me and you're forgetful and you leave stuff in your printers, it'll save you from crashing. Um, whereas Clicky, you have to do a whole docking thing, probing, it can drop. There, it, Clicky and, and Tap are on paper the same accuracy. It's, 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 a, it's a switch. It's a, it's a mechanical, you're actually probing the bed surface itself, which has a lot of advantages to it because you're actually probing what you're printing on. You're not probing the, the metal under the layer of PEI under the layer of glue. Um, and allows you to swap your beds out without having to worry about any adjustments of anything. Um, or same with nozzles, it just, it just compensates for it. Um, so I do wanna try beacon on something, but I'm not gonna put it on any of my borons because I'm running tap in there, or I will be running tap. I can't put it in the rat rig because I have to avoid all the magnets and it's a 200 millimeter bed. So I'm avoiding probing half the bed. So what's the point of using a fast probe at that point? And two, um, most of my machines don't run a bed mesh. So being able to do a QGL slightly faster doesn't really save me any time because I'm not doing QGL or I'm not doing bed meshes. So Beacon, in my opinion, makes a lot of sense on like a bed flinger type setup where you're meshing the whole bed where the bed is very thin and it's warpy and whatever. That makes a lot more sense. Using it on like a heavy duty machine that's very repeatable is kind of like overkill. I guess, I don't know. Did I get the re revised? I've got two tap kits. Um, I've got the um, one from uh, off the Etsy store that will be going in Tallboy. And then I've also got the updated Chaotic Lab one. That one will be going in um, the LDO V2 at some point. Beacon optical or magnetic, it's inductive. It, it, it Beacon has the same pros and cons as an inductive probe. It's just a really, really, really fast, accurate inductive probe, but it's still susceptible to temperature drift and you're still reading the metal. You're not reading the print surface. So to be fair, I have machines that still run inductive probes too. Uh, Toasty still has an inductive probe. It still works. It's just there are pros and cons to every system. Tap has a disadvantage where it makes the tool head heavier. So you can't, you know, send it to crazy YOLO speeds, but I don't do speed benching, so I don't really care so much about weight. What about beacon on the boron switch wires since you can't use tap? That is an option. Um, that is an option. Beacon is temperature compensated. That is true. That is true. But it, it still is something that is susceptible to heat drift. Like I'm talking about the actual physical sensor itself, not the compensation. Also beacon only works with clipper. So if you're not running clipper, you can't run beacon unless they change that. BL touch, I, BL touch, people still use BL touches. Um, I bought a legit BL touch five years ago. I used it for like a week and I did not like it. I haven't used one since. 
except for like kits that come with them. Okay, let's see if this will actually play now. There you go. Faster. Look at it go. There's its cooling, by the way. If you're wondering how it cools, um, you'll start seeing it do it right about here. Um, minimum layer time. That's how that's how a Tico does cooling. It's just ambient. I will say it does look really cool. Like it is very cathartic or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a Tico. I mean, it's a Tico. What do you expect? Okay, we've got one minute until the end of stream. So if you haven't had a chance to enter for your chance to win some Polymaker filament, link in the video description. Enter for your uh, your chance because we're going to do the draw here in a minute. I don't know, maybe when I eventually build that Annex K3, I'll, uh, I'll put a beacon on it. Makes kind of sense for that machine. And the, uh, the VZBot 330 kit shipped today, I believe. ABL. <laughs> I ain't going there. Ah. So yeah, so we'll let this finish. I'll post pictures of this on the Twitters and the Discord um, after the stream ends. So remember, tomorrow, um, what's this? What's this? Okay, entire ventless fiber. Ooh, here we go. Bioethanol fireplace fuel. Specifications. Is that just ISO? Low odor. 100% so alcohol blend of ethanol and ISO. It's ethanol and ISO. I don't know if ethanol is bad. I've used methanol. Uh, back when I worked at the tool shop, we used methanol a lot on the floor to clean stuff. I may or may not have procured a few extra bottles of that to take home to clean resin prints at the time. Um, it's a gel. Oh, if it's a gel, then no. Yeah, if it's a gel, it's a no-no. Can't be using a gel. Yeah, gel's a no-no. You drink ethanol. Well, in that case, um, Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got in the good old fridge? I've got a bottle of red wine. I don't think I can use red wine to clean a print. <laughs> one for you. Yeah, one sweet. One for you. One for me. Okay. Let's do this giveaway. So if you didn't enter, uh, you'll have another chance tomorrow. So tomorrow um, is Rook building. So we're going to be doing the electrical on the Rook. Uh, getting everything wired up. I've got some replacement parts too uh, printed up, so we'll be good to go there. Um, how many people don't know one plus zero is one? Eight. Eight people don't know zero, one plus zero is one. I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, give me a number between like five and ten. Five and ten. Three. One, two, three. That's, wait, that's not five and ten. Seven. Well, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Round and round she goes where she stops. Uh, Bob knows. Bob Bob knows everything. 
Oh, 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 Alex S. Congratulations, Alex S. You have won yourself a spool of filament from Polymaker as long as you got the question right. Ooh, okay. You did, congratulations. So you'll get an email from me after the stream ends uh, with information on how to collect your filament. Kevin, gifted one community membership. Cheers, Kevin. Um, so let's see, let me let me pull up my schedule here. So we got a little bit coming up in the next little bit. Um, I know I haven't set up the community challenge for this month. We're probably not gonna be doing a community challenge this month. I'm just kinda, there's a bunch going on. I'm just busy. Um, and the schedule is gonna be kind of full. So I know we're already halfway through the month anyways and I forgot to set it up. So I don't think we're gonna be doing a community challenge this month. I'll try and I'll figure out something fun to do the last Friday of the month. Um, but I was supposed to do something that I'm not anymore. And I'll just say that. Um, so it was kind of like I, I didn't plan on it, then I planned on it, then I didn't plan on it, and now we're here. So um, tomorrow, Rook build. Tuesday is Prusa day. So we're building a Prusa. Um, next Friday, we're building Hedamame V2s. Um, Q Forge Community Challenge. No, because that involves buying something. Um, simple as that. I, I try to, community challenges, I try to make pretty much anyone can enter um, for like, anyone can enter. I try to make them as simple as possible. Um, so Tuesday, and then the VZ bot might be showing up soon. Like that's the thing, like so, what's ahead of my headphones? We're building some 3D printed uh, headphones. Um, and then there's like some other stuff. I can't remember, I've got a bunch coming up soon. Um, so yeah. There's like a printer I'm waiting to show up, I believe. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, printer might be showing up that Friday, that's why. Um, so we're gonna call it there. Um, for those of you that donate to the channel, gifted memberships to others or became members of the channel yourself, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. Shout out to Elegoo uh, for sending this printer over. Um, I don't know if I'll end up doing a review video on it. We'll see. Um, but I will get this, when this print is done, I'll post pictures of it and I'll print an actual big model and show it off and whatnot. And I gotta go buy some ISO. Um, and shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament we gave away. So it is Friday. Um, be safe out there, wash your hands, enjoy your weekend. And I will see you tomorrow where we'll do some fun stripping and crimping on the, on the rook. Yay, bye. I did not hit the right buttons to outro that. Um... Okay. No, no, no. Uh...